Ya hala. Right now we're going to talk about a really useful Arabic word pattern called Ism al Makan. Ism al Makan literally means place name or name of a place, name of the place. When we say that though, we're not talking about proper nouns, names of specific places like Beirut or New York. We mean instead the place where a certain thing happens. You know by now that verbs are the heart of Arabic, so this pattern allows us to create or recognize nouns that are places where particular actions are undertaken. You probably know a lot of these words already. Madrasa, meaning school, maktaba, library, maktab, a desk or an office depending on the context, masbah, swimming pool, and matbakh, kitchen. What they all have in common is that they are built on the same pattern, the same wazn, maf'al. which is the pattern that we use to take a Form 1 verb and make a place noun out of it. Matbakh comes from the verb yatbukh. To cook, and it's a place of cooking, a kitchen. Masbah comes from the verb yasbukh and means a swimming pool, place of swimming. Maktab desk, a place of writing, maktaba, a library, also a different kind of place of writing, madrasa, from yadrus, is a place of studying. So let's start with a couple more verbs and see a few more examples. There is a verb, kharaja, that's in the past tense, which means to exit, to leave a place. So if we wanted to put kharaja into the same pattern and create a word that means a place of leaving, an exit, we would keep the three letters of the jadr, add a meme at the beginning with a fatha urut, make sure to keep that sukun there, going to be two syllables and we wind up with makhraj which is the word that you see written over doors in public places throughout the Arab world meaning an exit a place of leaving suppose we want to talk about an entrance instead we could use the verb dakhala and if we wanted to talk about an entrance a place of coming in We apply the same template exactly, and we get madkhal, an entrance. One more example, if we want to play soccer or basketball or tennis or another sport, we need a place to play that game. So we take the verb for play and we apply the same template exactly and wind up with malab which maybe we could translate as a court a basketball or soccer or squash court there are a couple of other wrinkles that we need to bear in mind when we encounter ism makan or when we're trying to construct one of our own First of all, you probably noticed that a couple of these examples here have a tamarbuta at the end. This is unpredictable. Occasionally an ism makan will just have a tamarbuta on it. It's up to us to know and memorize whether a particular word has tamarbuta or not. Sometimes we'll have two words that are both asmat makan that have slightly different meaning. Maktaba with a tamarbuta is a place of writing, a library, and maktab, with no tamarbuta, means a desk or an office. So it's just up to us to know from context and to know whether or not two exist or whether just one exists. The other little wrinkle, the plural 
of Asma Makan tends to be pretty regular and it's built on a slight modification of this pattern. Mafail. So if we want to talk about multiple offices, for example, Maktab, I take the same word and I plug it into this pattern instead for a plural. So I get Makatib. Where I'm retaining the extra bits, I'm just plugging in the Kaftab, the meaningful bit that means writing, into this wazn. I keep the jother and just manipulate it into the wazn. Or multiple schools. I would take the dal ra sin, the churning core of meaning in the verb yadrus, and wind up with madaris. I just plug the jother into the extra. Occasionally, occasionally, especially if we have two variations, you will get an ism makan with a tamarbuta that uses the regular feminine ending. In this case, the plural of maktaba libraries would be maktabet. It doesn't happen often, but we need to be prepared for it to keep our thinking hats on and to recognize, especially when we learn a new ism makan, that we might need to check on the plural. One last thing. There are a couple of asma makan, more than a couple actually, plenty of asma makan, where the second vowel is not a fatha but a kasra. One way to predict that is by knowing what the vowel is, the middle vowel of the conjugated present tense verb. For example, we have a formal word for a house or a dwelling, menzil. And here we have a kasra, not a fatha. That might take me by surprise, but not if I knew that the verb that it's derived from, which means sort of to reside or stay in a place, has a kasra on the second letter of its root, its judr, yanzi. Whether or not I know that right off the bat, depends on whether or not I have particular vocabulary words. But if I see manzil, I can know kind of automatically because it have a kas has a kasra. Oh, all right, the verb that it's derived from has a kasra in the middle when it's conjugated in the present tense. So you can sort of engineer your knowledge from either direction. One last wrinkle you might be asking if you know something about the Arabic verb forms, the derived ones. Well. All of these are derived from form one verbs, but what about all of the other forms, two through ten? We do have asmat makan in all of those other forms, and they are the same as ism al maf'ul, the derived passive participle. There's another video on that that you can go and watch. But just wanted to give you a couple of examples. For example, if I want to talk about a hospital in Arabic. The word from hospital is derived from the form 10 verb. Istashfa. Form 10 verbs tend to be about seeking and istashfa means to seek a cure. So a hospital is a place of seeking a cure. If I know that the form 10 passive participle is Mustafal. I can take this verb and plug it into that paradigm. So I know that my judr is these three letters here. And in the template it's represented here. So I put them all together. I keep the vowels exactly where they need to be. And I wind up with Mustashfa, a place of healing or a hospital.
If you don't know about ism al maf'ul yet, the passive participles, don't sweat running off and memorizing all of that. Really, a lot, a ton of asma' makan in Arabic are built on form one verbs. And the important thing at this point is just to be able to recognize them and build them if you really need them. But to understand that when you see that maf'al pattern, something is being told to you about what kind of word you're dealing with. And it's very likely to be a physical place or a more abstract place, but a place where something happens.